Hey, welcome back to Bear Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the iPad to teach mathematics from home. And there's three steps that I really I, I use to do this is number one is um, schedule the online learning. And the number two is really do the video conferencing and the live annotation uh, with, the, with the students. And then third and finally, to review and give feedback to the students. So I'm going to show you those three steps. Really, what I want to do is I want to share my workflow um, on how I do this on a daily basis. So uh, without further ado, let's just jump into this then. First thing first, what I do is I look at the, the scope and sequence, what we're gonna be teaching for um, for this week, okay, or the following week, and I'll identify the, the statement of inquiry. So particularly in this week, the statement of inquiry that we're doing is modeling real life problems can help generalize solutions and connect relationships through meaning. Uh, really what that is, is linear um, equations, and we were doing a system of equations using simultaneous equations, okay? Um, so I'm gonna just schedule that work. I'm gonna show you how I schedule that work on the Google Classroom. Uh, and then what resources I use and what applications I use to schedule that uh, and share the lesson notes with the students. Now, I do collaborate with other teachers who are teaching the same year group. So I will schedule the work for that year group and then send out emails so that we're in communication and everyone's happy with the content and the work that's going out. We'll um, update school's website so that parents are also familiar with what we're doing for the week and the weeks coming, you know, the, the, the forthcoming weeks. So uh, let's just dive into this then. First thing first, I'm gonna to go to the resource management platform, which in our case is ManageMac, and just go and see what the scope and sequence is and the learning objectives. Uh, and then I'm gonna go and find the resource I'm gonna be using. In this case, we're gonna be using a reference text, which is the Hayes uh, Mathematics uh, textbook that we're gonna be used for middle school. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and find that resource, find the chapter, the actual um, activity, the exercise that we're, the students are gonna be completing and then put this lesson together. In this particular uh, lesson today, we're gonna to be using Kahoot as well. And so we're gonna do a live demonstration using Kahoot. Uh, our students really do enjoy that. I, I think all students uh, worldwide enjoy a, a very good Kahoot. So what I will do is once I've identified the actual exercise that the students are gonna be completing, I'm gonna make a PDF of that. So I'm gonna select, uh, I'm gonna screenshot using the iPad. Uh, there's a really good trick here that you can just swipe the Apple Pencil from the right bottom corner and that will take a screenshot uh, and then I would save that screenshot into photos and then I would later on import that picture into my note taking app. Now the note taking app that I'm going to be using is GoodNotes um, so I will copy those uh, screenshots for the exercise that we're going to be doing okay and crop those pictures appropriately uh, to use in GoodNotes. Um, also in addition here after we've done the Kahoot what I'm going to do is I'm going to direct the students to a YouTube video that I've made, okay, which is the best way to solve um, simultaneous equations, okay, using the table uh, format here. So I'm gonna go and find that thumbnail that I've got um, for that video, and I'm gonna put a link. So I'm gonna go to my YouTube channel, just copy and paste that link into GoodNotes. So when I send out that PDF, students have access to um, it, it, that video. So once we've done the Kahoot, uh, we're gonna jump, get them to jump onto the YouTube video to watch that. Just a bit of a, a blended classroom, a flip, flip learning classroom. The benefit of using video is so that students can pause, rewind and go back and forth on the video uh, until they're comfortable and familiar with the concept that you're trying to teach them. The issue that I do find with any um, web conferencing application, whether it's Skype or Zoom or WebEx or any other other um, platforms that are, you can use, um, there is always a bit of lag. And once a student has missed a part of um, the meeting, it's very difficult for them to go back and see what's happened, okay? So the benefit of sending out a, um, a video link on a YouTube video, whether it's your own video or somebody, someone else's video at Khan Academy or, uh, you know, um, Math Antics or whatever uh, other platform you're gonna use, it's helpful for students to send out their video so that they can have um, a reference point. They can always go back to it and watch the, the video while they're doing the exercise. So I've scheduled that and I've copied and pasted um, the screenshots that I want for the activity that we need to do. Uh, and I'm gonna put that on a Google Classroom, okay? And, and I'm not just gonna send it out in Google Classroom, I'm gonna schedule it. Now, what I like to do with the title is uh, give the title the actual date, the day and the date, so the students are familiar 
um, with what they're doing there and then. It's really easy for students to find in a plethora of all these activities and assignments um, for their online learning. It's easy for them just to look at the date and the title and say, hey, that's what I'm doing today, yeah? So let's label this um, Sunday the, the 10th of May. And um, so students can uh, find that activity very quickly. Now, like I said, I'm not just gonna send this out. I'm gonna schedule it uh, five or 10 minutes before um, we started the session, okay, the online session, the WebEx session. Um, so that will be Sunday at, um, this particular class is going to be at 11.55. So 12 o'clock is the scheduled time for the session. So 11.55, we sent out those notes. So students are familiar um, with what they're doing about five minutes ahead of the lesson. Why that's important is so that they can, um, you know, log into WebEx and, and be prepared, make sure that their system, their computer or their iPad or their cell phone, whatever they're using is ready uh, to go ahead for that lesson. What I tend to do with WebEx is I would lock my room, my personal room, um, after 10 minutes. So that gives students 10 minutes to get prepared uh, and jump in, log in with the meeting. Uh, what I would do with that meeting is we'll have just a little icebreaker. If it's um, a lesson just after the weekend, we'll speak about, we'll just talk about the weekend. Uh, you know, how was, how was your weekend? Or I'll give a personal an anecdote as how my weekend went. Really just do an icebreaker so kids are nice, and comfortable uh, and really um, are ready to absorb the, the learning objective. So once that happens, I will um, share the learning outcome. Well, I'll share that anyway on the Google Classroom and then we'll jump, jump on to that learning activity. Now, whether it's gonna be Kahoot or it's gonna be uh, live demonstrations on some of the examples that we'll be running through on the activity or whatever the um, exercise is, in this case, is simultaneous equations. So I'll do a live demo so students can see what, um, is expected of them and just do a worked example so they can take notes from it. Now remember that these notes are already shared out on the Google Classroom so they can always go and find a reference point, a pinpoint of their learning outcome. It's really, really important. I think the, the, the main point that I'm trying to get across here is if we had to teach on a platform that was asynchronous, students should have a reference point where they can always go back to uh, and look at the, the skills and knowledge that they're supposed to be learning. So it's very important for me to share out whatever the, the class notes are beforehand so students have access to um, some notes. You know, they may have diff technical difficulties, they may not be able to log on to the WebEx um, or, or the Skype or the Zoom meeting. So they should be able to then asynchronously be able to jump onto that learning uh, activity and complete it and then at a later stage get feedback from the teacher. So at this point, what we've done is we've now reviewed our learning outcomes. We've looked at the scope and sequence and the statement of inquiry. We've shared the lesson on Google Classroom. Uh, and now we're ready to do the web, you know, the video conferencing. So let's go on to see a demo of the video conferencing. What I do is I tend to use my um, Apple AirPods, okay? And I connect uh, the Apple AirPods using um, Siri shortcuts right here you can see that uh, and then I'll just jump on to uh, again using Siri shortcuts start a WebEx meeting now once we've done that WebEx meeting like I said we'll do a little icebreaker maybe talk about a personal anecdote something that I've done throughout the week that might may be interesting for the students I'll ask the students to share some examples of how they're getting on um, how they're feeling um, just you know share um, some icebreakers on Webex before we start the learning outcome. Now, personal room on Webex is gonna lock in 10 minutes. Now, I find that latecomers then don't interfere or disturb the meeting, okay? I'll once in a while jump back into uh, the Webex app to see if there is anyone waiting in the lobby. If there is, I'll admit those into the lobby, give them a quick welcome, and then we'll get straight back onto sharing the screen and doing the live demo. Once the live demo is done and um, we've directed the students to go back and look at the attachment on the Google Classroom for them to com start completing their work, I will stay live on WebEx. Why? Because if I stay live on WebEx, students have a point of contact to ask me questions and say, sir, you know what, actually I don't get a question to on the exercise, uh, could you go through it? And then at that point I will do a screen share again uh, and I would use GoodNotes to do a live demonstration using the Apple Pencil. This is why the iPad is 
far more powerful than using a desktop uh, computer or a PC or a, or a MacBook because the benefit is in using the pencil is that we can annotate on the screen. Now, I can't do that on my MacBook, nor can I do it on uh, my laptop or my desktop. So the iPad is the most powerful tool that I can use to teach my lessons from home. Um, I use good notes to write my lesson templates. Okay, write the lesson notes that we're gonna share out with the, with the students. And then once we're live on WebEx and students have questions on the exercise, then I could go ahead and share my screen and do a live demonstration, which is what you're looking at right now. Once all of that is said and done, and the session is coming to an end, I'll ask whether anyone needs any help exercise that they're doing. If they don't need any help, then what I would request is that they take a picture and they share their work on Google Classroom so that I as a teacher can now mark it and give them feedback, okay? Uh, for the most part, I'll just give a, a, a quick comment and say, well done, you've done great, uh, and go ahead and share that feedback with the students using Google Classroom. And sometimes I would go on and actually mark and grade the exercise, again, using the Apple Pencil and annotating straight from Google Classroom. So you can go straight to Google Classroom and annotate um, on the student's work and feed it back to them as a PDF. They can see um, the comments and the feedback that you've given them. And you can also grade it by giving them a score out of 100 or whatever you set as a rubric for the marking criteria for that activity. So I hope that sharing my workflow was helpful for you to um, get some tips and tricks and some ideas. I think most of our colleagues are doing this anyway. I, I thought that it would be a good idea just to get something out there um, as a, you know, maybe, maybe as a template or in a, as an example. Um, as always, comment in the section below for your ideas that we can share with the community. And consider subscribing for more videos like this. Remember, this is a math channel with over 100 different um, math tutorials uh, that you can share with your students, or maybe you are a student watching this, you can learn from. So consider subscribing, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.